Today we'll be talking about the 1985 movie Out of Africa, starring Meryl Streep and Robert Redford. The film is based off of the autobiographical book of the same name, written by Isaac Dinesen, the pen name of Danish author Karen Blixen. The film received 28 awards, including 7 Academy Awards. The movie tells the story of Karen Dinesen, played by Streep, and her travels to Africa with a plan to establish a lucrative dairy farm. The movie begins in Denmark when Karen asks her friend Roar Blixen to marry her. The two decide to go to Africa to profit off of cash crops and because they seek adventure and experience. The two also want to spread Western civilization and technology to whom they believe to be inferior native peoples. After arriving in East Africa, things don't go exactly as planned. Baron Blixen decides to use Karen's money to buy a coffee plantation instead of the agreed upon dairy farm. After Karen gets syphilis from her womanizing husband, she returns to Denmark to be cured. When she returns to Africa, the influence of the Europeans is very evident. Africa has an influx of new technology like cars, and they are driving away loads of wildlife that once roamed the area. Wires are set, are set up, roads and railroads are built, and planes fly over the fields. Manual labor is replaced by machines, and parades commemorating ma military victories are completed with fireworks, marching bands, and the waving of Britain's flag, showing the great impact of Europeans. When Karen finds out that Broer has been cheating on her, she asks him to move out and develops a close friendship with a local game hunter named Dennis, who is played by Robert Redford. As they, as they become more and more smitten with each other, Dennis moves into Karen's house. He refuses to marry her because he believes that a written agreement will not change the nature of their love. At the end of the film, World, World War I is ending and the coffee plantation burns down. Dennis dies in a plane accident and Karen leaves Africa and returns to Denmark where she remains for the rest of her life. Now, I think this movie did a great job of showing the differences between the Europeans and the indig indigenous peoples. The Africans were depicted as heavy laborers that were always under the command of the white imperialists. For example, when Karen was on the train to Africa at the beginning of the film, the blacks were all forced to sit at the back of the train on crates. At first, Karen chews them away, believing that they would steal her crystals. Definitely. When Karen gets off of the train, her and her daughter are wheeled around in a wagon by a black man, which shows how Karen's dog is considered to be of higher status than the African man. Blacks are also ordered around with the word fetch, showing how disrespectful they were. The contrast between the living conditions of the white imperialists and the blacks is also very apparent. The blacks live in close, crowded, primitive, primitive huts, while the white imperialists live in, in grand houses with many large rooms and luxuries. Another example of how the native people are depicted as subordinate is when Karen trips in the field one day, and the blacks come rushing to help her. The Europeans are also much more formally dressed as compared to the Africans, some of whom were virtually naked. Some of the blacks are sickly skinny. One in particular has an infected gash on his leg. The blacks are portrayed as helpless and incapable of living without European occupation or help. As mentioned before, this movie is based off of Karen Blixen's autobiography, Out of Africa, in which she describes her accounts of living in Kenya. The movie is interspersed with quotes from her acclaimed novel. Karen Blixen, in real life, did actually marry Roar Blixen, whom she later divorced in 1925. She also had a coffee, coffee plantation run by African laborers, like in the movie, and did develop a long-term relationship with Dennis Finchat. The director of the film was Sidney Pollack, who has directed many other historical movies. He directed multiple Western films, including The Scalp Hunters and Jeremiah Johnson. In addition, he directed the Yakuza, which portrays Japan during the transition out of U.S. occupation in the 1970s. Meryl Streep, who plays Karen, has also starred in many historical movies. She played a real union activist, Karen Silkwood, in the biographical movie Silkwood, and she also starred in The Deer Hunter, a movie about Russian steelworkers and their service in the Vietnam War. I also think this film is accurate in showing Karen's initial oblivion and carelessness towards African culture. Soon after she arrives in Kenya, Karen tells her servant Farah that she wants to build a pond. When Farah says that the water belongs in Mombasa, Karen says that the water will go to Mombasa after it's in her pond. This depicts the selfish tendencies of European imperialists and show how they didn't care for African needs. Absolutely. The British East India Company arrives later and tries to colonize Kenya, showing how they don't care for Africa's state before the Europeans arrived. Karen's desire for Dennis to shoot a lion shows that she also doesn't care for African wildlife or nature. Karen's obliviousness towards different tribes shows her lack of education or appreciation of African culture. I think overall we can agree that although the film was historically accurate in many ways, the kindness of Karen, Broer, and Dennis towards their African workers did not sufficiently portray the often cruel treatment of European imperialists towards Africans. Definitely. For example, despite the sassy and unruly behavior of many of her African workers, Karen believes that blacks shouldn't be whipped so much and objects to killing anyone on her plantation. 
Also, later in the movie, Dennis is quoted saying, we're not owners, just passing through. Buy Kikuyu. Buy Limoges. Buy Farm. It's an awful lot to own, isn't it? I have paid a price for everything I own. And what is it exactly that's yours? We're not owners here, Karen. We're just passing through. This inaccurately represents the attitude of European imperialists in Africa, who militantly claimed huge plots of African land and took control of African politics. When the British try to step in and take Karen's land to form Kenya Colony, Karen shows that she wants the natives to have a home. Karen also later shows respect to the different African tribes. These feelings are completely uncharacteristic of Europeans who partitioned Africa without any regard for tribal conflicts. In fact, the reason for a lot of unrest in Africa today is because of disputes between tribes that came about when Europeans split up Africa. The last scene is a great closing image for the movie. At this point, Karen has become friends with her black servant, Farah. She gives him a compass and asks him to call her by her real name in the final moment before she leaves for Denmark. Karen and Farah have an almost equal relationship whereas Europeans felt complete superiority towards their black co counterparts. Europeans often treated Africans without respect for their culture, dress, traditions, or religion. I think we can all agree that even though Out of Africa did a great job of showing the differences between blacks and whites, the kind portrayal of Europeans doesn't actually show the European atrocities towards Africans. This in conjunction with not showing African feelings or towards imperialism shows the Western bias by the Americans who made the film. Agreed. Overall, this movie, albeit the virtually three-hour length, is definitely a must-see. Would you agree, Anna? Absolutely. That's all we have time for on this episode. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week, where we'll be reviewing the 1982 movie, Gandhi.